Hey, welcome to Sunday Hunting with Hendre. Today we are in the beautiful Borland Mountains here outside the Cape, about 850 meters above sea level. And we are looking for some lovely Rosa Eregrinii, Sister Flora, and so on. Really, really wonderful. Yeah, so here we have another little cute Cape creature. This is a velvet worm, Peripatopsis. They're quite common under rocks and moss banks and so on. They're very primordial, prehistoric little creatures. The fossil record goes back super, super long. I think this might be Peritop Peritopopsis, Lawrence A. Peritopops. The name is confusing, but very adorable little creature nonetheless. So here on the wonderful mountainside seep, we have Drosera cystiflora. It's a wonderful group of carnivorous plants from across the Cape. Very tall, very beautiful. They have a nice basal rose head at the bottom, followed by a stem running up. You can see a flower bud coming about there. That is a nice little flower bud. And enjoying this nice wet soil on the mountainside. And here adjacent to the seep, we have another wonderful rare Cape species. Drosera erigrinii. This was named after the late Eric Green, a wonderful man who collected and discovered many Cape sundews over the years. This is a dry growing sundew. Its token character is this very fluffy flower stem. It's fairly short and compact. It grows on a stem of old growth. So I don't know if you can see it in there. It's got lots of old leaves. Let's focus. Lots of old leaves, so year after year builds up. When summer comes, it goes dormant, forms a nice resting bud, and then they continue growing in the next season. They're quite unique, and then they're relatively dry growing, they're often under these sort of rocks on the slopes. So you can see it's got a few rocks around. A wonderful landscape. Okay, so here in the shade, we have quite a few more Eric Green Eye. There's a small one. I'll see, I've got a stem. We have some young, young little seedlings down here. They've still got lots of growing to do. And as they get bigger, they form these nice sprawling rosettes. Okay, they're taller. They're not the prettiest looking of Sundays, often quite shaded out, and I think that limits the ability somewhat. If we get up, have a look around. This is a wonderful, beautiful habit, or habitat that they enjoy. And they're only found in this mountain complex, and so far, yet to be discovered anywhere else. So here's another nice little bunch of Eric Green Eye. This time, instead of under a rock, it is here in Feinbos, to give you a nice idea of how their habitat is looking. So just another interesting tidbit. Oh, sorry, green eye is they have an insanely hairy inflorescence. So this flowering stem here is still fairly young, as you can see, absolutely coated in hair. The leaves are similar. They are extremely, extremely hairy on the underside. So yeah, really, really interesting hairy, scary species. So we're here further along the Franchuk Pass. This is really a place of fantastic natural beauty. Goes over the Detori River, over into Tiavata's Kloof, then the distance. What we're really interested in, something very special close down here. Strosera cystiflora. This is a lovely winter growing species. These majestic, beautiful flowers, you get them all sorts of different colors. The ones here are pink, with a dark center. Makes this nice basil rose with a stem. A few leaves on. These huge flowers. They flower for a few days at a time. Make a few flowers. This is very unusual. It's growing in very dry, rocky terrain. Must get fairly frequent rains. But it's pretty scrubby, pretty dry compared to the others we saw earlier, which were only growing in the seeps. There's just something else that might be of interest. The sister flora flower here is currently being munched on by a caterpillar. I've noticed the ovaries of these flowers are often 
quite popular with insects. I've seen, I've had caterpillars eat some of my own. I've seen grasshoppers. Now, down here, have a good example. Get it to focus. The flower's been pretty much completely consumed. Petals, ovaries, everything. Compared to a nice, fresh bud that we will have to hunt for. There we go, nice, untouched, ready to go. So yeah, despite sundews being quite obviously insectivorous, they sometimes fall victim to various well, predators I kind of find. The, ah, there we go, lovely little untouched sister flora. So yeah, despite being insect-eating plants, they sometimes still fall victim to little consumers. So now this is more where you'd expect to find sundews. It's nice and peaty. It's wet. And you would be correct. Trinervia, Drosera trinervia, is down here in the force. The little guys here. Very common here in the Cape during winter time. So they're currently inhabiting. It's nice peaty wet seep. It's a water running down here, but I don't see any capensis, so it means it's probably seasonal. It's quite nice, it runs down the hill here. So we're back at the road now on some rather interesting things for you guys. So first of all, we have some lovely, lovely trinervia. These ones are fairly large compared to the rest here. They're starting to get flowers ready. The Trinovia is a dime a dozen. They are literally hundreds down here. There's some more. There's some more. The real interesting thing over here, once the car has passed us, is these bonnet orchids. So these are in the genus Pterygodium. It's a fairly diminutive creature. But they're really interesting because they produce oil for bees, right, Aviva. So I have a group of bees that exclusively pollinates them. And one bee pollinates several different species. So really interesting to find. It's here by a little roadside ditch. Here are the rest of the Trinovia I spoke about. There are dozens upon dozens upon dozens of them here. And some of them look like they're getting fairly close to flowering. So maybe in a week or two, there'll be a sea of little pink flowers here. There are a few flowers, but these are Romilia wine cups. Drosophytrinovia flowers are a similar color, but not quite like that. 